I'm with you. <clears throat> Good evening. Hello, teacher. Hey, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> All right. Um, let's begin, everybody. I'm going to share the screen with you now. Here we go. Um, okay, there it is. Hope you can see it. Well, um, everybody be welcome. Be welcome uh, to this new level. This is advanced two, right? The second advanced course. So, um, and that's me in case you, well, I guess most of you know me by now, but anyway, I have to, well, this is this is part of the protocol. I have to introduce myself and explain everything. You know what, how this is. So I'm gonna try to do this um, uh, quickly, okay? So that we don't uh, use up much time um, on this. So uh, that's me, my name is Ivan Duñang and um, at your service, of course, there's the first part, which is all in Spanish. I guess I have to say it in Spanish, okay? Uh, I'm gonna speak Spanish right now because this is, the information is in Spanish. Uh, formación académica, de verdad, soy licenciado en idioma inglés, opción de enseñanza, y también tengo una acreditación en didáctica y planificación por parte de INSAFOR, lo cual me acredita, ¿verdad?, para eh, impartir este tipo de cursos. Eh, como experiencia laboral, ¿verdad?, he sido facilitador del idioma inglés desde el año 2005, así que ya vamos para, ¿cuántos años serían? 18 años, <ríe> ya con este, ya, ya ratito, no parece, pero ya tengo mis años. Uh, o tal vez si sí parece, no sé. Eh, tenemos el grupo de WhatsApp, ¿verdad? Al cual eh, esta es la dirección en caso que aún no se hayan unido, les invito a todos a que se unan a él. Ok, this is English, so I'm going to speak English right now. Okay, this is the WhatsApp group, this is the link that you have to access so that you can become a member of the, of the, of the group. The group rules always remember, always keep to the purpose of the group. What is the meaning of this? The meaning is... Um, it's just for academic purposes, okay? Just academic purposes, nothing more than that. Uh, this is not for you to, to sell things or buy things, okay? This is not for jokes or, or memes or TikToks or anything like that. No, this is just for uh, things that, um, things that are, well, anything that is just concerning the, the level that we're studying today, okay? This is what we're going to do in the group. Um, anything else? Well, no. Okay. That's not the idea. Uh, the second one is be polite and respectful to each other. You know, uh, sometimes um, your, your uh, point of view might be different from, from your classmates, but that doesn't mean that you have to be rude to them or impolite or insult them in any way. If, if anything is, um, if you don't agree with something they say, okay, uh, it's okay. It's normal, but uh, please, you know, keep the respect among each other. That's the idea. You have to be polite and respectful to each other all the time. And one more thing is that all questions will be answered during class. Uh, you can use the group, okay, to um, express your doubts or your questions. Sometimes uh, there will be questions about exercises in the platform. You will say like, I don't know how to answer this, or every time I try to answer this, this particular exercise, I get it wrong. So somebody please help me. Now, one thing that I'll do is I'll take a look at it but I don't usually, you know, respond in the group. What I do is that I take a mental note on it, and then in the next class, okay, we see it. I believe it's 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 much more effective if we do it like that because it's um, um, it becomes um, let's say it, it it becomes something that we all can learn from, not just the person who has the problem with the exercise or just the person who has the question. But uh, this is a way in which uh, we can enrich everybody's experience. And that's why we do it like this. All questions will be answered during class. Um, we go back to Spanish. OK, tareas y evaluaciones. Es necesario obtener el 80% de promedio de tareas y evaluaciones para poder completar el curso satisfactoriamente. 80%, that means 80% of everything that's in the platform must be completed by the end of the level. And also, uh, you have to um join each of the meetings uh via team via whatsapp I'm, no it's not whatsapp it's zoom i'm sorry i'm getting confused right here no i'm really sorry um uh it's just that sometimes i use both platform platforms that's why i got confused it's via zoom right so uh every minute you're connected counts okay uh for the completion percentage of the of the level so even if you're late for a class even if you can only connect for like 20 minutes please join the meeting 
okay, join the meeting because those 20 minutes count, okay? At, at the end of the level, they, they, they sum up, you know, a certain percentage or uh, an amount of minutes that uh, will help you pass the level, okay? Um, las tareas se encuentran en la plataforma y se recomienda trabajar en ellas justo después de cada clase para adelantar contenido. Okay, what is explained right there? Okay, everything is in the platform, as you know. Okay, and uh, the idea is remember that this type of course is like um, self-taught. In other words, the idea is for you to start working on those exercises, and when you find something, okay, uh, that's what we have this class. Okay, we have the class as a form of uh, support. Okay, this is just a support. It's not the class and then the platform. No, it's first the platform and then the class, just in case you have questions or anything else. Or simply, if you want to practice your English, here we are. Uh, todas las tareas de los temas ya cubiertos tienen que estar completas antes de cada viernes a la medianoche, ya que ese registro es enviado en Safor semanalmente. In my experience, this is not, uh, you have to do it before Friday, actually. You have to do it like by Thursday. Okay, so yeah, sometimes, you know, uh, the people in charge of the groups tell you, listen, um, uh, you need to complete this by Thursday. So don't wait until Friday. Uh, my, my, my advice is do it by Thursday. It's it's much better if you do it by Thursday. Material de apoyo serán compartido a criterio de profesor en formato digital. Yeah, sometimes there are things that are not included in the manual and that I um, I can share with you via the WhatsApp group. Okay, but that's extra material when it exists. Okay, it doesn't always exist, but when it does, I will send it to you via WhatsApp so that everybody can have it and study it later. So um, now uh, about uh, evaluations and homework. Uh, first week is just uh, section number one. Second week will be section number two and the midterm, which as you know, is an exam by uh, half the level, okay? Then you have uh, week number three, we're gonna cover section three. And by week four, we're going to cover section four and the final exam, okay? So it's, it's, it's that's exactly what we're gonna do, right? One section per week. Uh, this is an advanced course, so it's it's not like the basic ones and the intermediate ones in which you cover like five sections in four weeks. Now it's just four sections, you know, um, four weeks. So one section per week. So um, something right here, Norma de Convivencia. I'm switching to Spanish once again. Okay. Botón silencio. As you know, right, if you're not participating, uh, I will always appreciate if you if your microphone is is not active. Okay, so if you deactivate your microphone for a second, that's good because if you don't, you know, all the noise from the background, sometimes noise that you're not aware of, you know, gets into the microphone and then uh, it can be heard by everybody. And if many people have the microphone active, okay, it 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 just gets together and it makes it very difficult for for people to uh, concentrate in class. So. If you're not participating, always remember, mute your microphone. Okay, that's very important. Uh, and if you want to participate, well, you unmute it, okay? Um, also, that's something else, your, your full name, okay? You have to have, when you connect to these meetings, please um, use your full name, okay? Uh, for example, I'm seeing here, uh, Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia. Okay, that's good, okay? Uh, Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia, Mejia has on display her full name. That's, that's great, okay? So... Thank you. Now, if you only have one name and one last name, um, there'll be a problem right there. Uh, it's not really a problem, but the thing is, this is one of those, um, this is required, okay, by InsaForb. It's not exactly Inglés Corporativo, but it's InsaForb that requires this. So um, please um, use your full name, okay, when you connect to the meetings. And be careful because sometimes uh, you may be using uh, the computer or a, or a device that belongs to someone else. Okay, and sometimes the name of a different person might may be in display. If that happens, just make sure you change it. Okay, because um, they check the videos and they check the attendance and uh, everything that you do on Zoom goes to some sort of registry. Okay, and you know, uh, people from InsoForp also have access to this registry. So they can check it out. And if they find, an, if they don't find your name, they will assume that you were not in class. Okay, or if they find a different name, they will say like, who's this person? Okay, so um, to avoid any misunderstandings, always, you know, have your full name on display. Um, the next one is, ah, your, your camera, camera is supposed to be on. Okay, I understand that there are some occasions in which this is not 
possible or not ideal. For example, some people are driving. Okay, so um, if you're driving, you're probably just wasting data just by having the camera on. So if, if that's the case, it, it is not absolutely necessary. But if you're in your house and you're connected to Wi-Fi and all that stuff, yeah, I would totally appreciate it if you could do that. You just give me one second, just, just a second. Thank you. Okay, um, that's it. So if, if if possible, please, everybody have your camera on. It's it's very, very important. Okay, so if you're, again, if you're connected to a Wi-Fi uh, network, well, I guess there's no excuse. And um, let's continue. Uh, the next is uh, active participation. That's very important. Okay, um, what do I mean by active participation? That means being in class. That's one. As you know, all the classes are recorded and then they are uploaded to YouTube and you have access to a playlist, okay, which is good. You can always watch the class later if you cannot join the meeting. But the idea is for you to join the meeting, okay? There's a, there's a completion uh, percentage that you must have and that's part of your participation. Another thing is um, I want you to, to talk. It's important. It's, it's, it's very important for you to talk. Um, I always make this comparison you know, when you want to learn to swim, you have to throw yourself into the pool, okay? If you don't throw yourself into the pool, you will never learn to swim, all right? You can read 10 books about swimming if you want, but you will never learn to swim if you don't try to swim. So it's the same in English, right? I mean, you can study all the English you want, but if you don't try to participate, if you don't try to produce it, you will never learn to actually speak English. So um, that's that's what I mean by your, uh, what we want here is your active participation. Um, this is very important. You have to raise your hand. And when I say raise your hand, I mean your, your virtual hand, okay? The digital hand, there's a bottom right here on Zoom, right? Which is, it's important that you uh, use it every time you want to participate. If you have a question, please raise your digital hand, your virtual hand. If you want to answer a question, okay, also do it. If you do it, you know, physically in front of the camera, you can always do this, of course. However, uh, like like uh, Anna Filomena just did right now. So, but the thing is that I cannot see everybody. I can only see five people at the same time. And if you're not one of those five people, I will never know that you're raising your hand. If you use the bottom, however, okay, I will always know, okay? It shows immediately and I go like, oh yeah, somebody wants to participate. Another thing is that um, if you, if, for example, there's an exercise and you wanna participate, um, it keeps the order, okay? This is like when you go to the supermarket and, and you want to pay, okay? What do you do? Well, you stand in a line, that's what you do. It's, it's, it's the civil thing to do. So, um, but what happens if somebody just cuts in line and, and stands in front of you? It's not nice, okay? So it's the same thing. You raise your hand, okay? And uh, it's like you are in a waiting list. But if somebody just uh, answers a question without raising the hand, it's like cutting in line, you know, in the supermarket. It's like you don't respect the order and, and the people who are waiting uh, before you. So um, every time you want to say something, please raise your hand. Another reason is that Sometimes when, when people just start talking, it's difficult for me to, you know, uh, spot the person. I just go like, who's talking? Who's talking? Right? And, and, and sometimes it's difficult for me to find a person. Or somebody says something and I say like, okay, thank you, uh, whoever said that, <laughs> because I only hear the voice. Um, that's why it's important to raise the hand first. Um, be respectful, as we have mentioned before, of course, not only in the WhatsApp group, but also in class. Okay. It, it goes without saying. Um, attendance uh, uh, policies, okay. Avance uh, desarrollo de la plataforma de aprendizaje, just what I mentioned before, you have to work on it. Work on it every day. That's what I recommend, okay. Every day. Uh, next is uh, uh, the class, okay, lasts for 60 minutes, okay. Sometimes, because it happens, sometimes you will have to work on an exercise or something that will require an extra two, three, even probably five minutes. We're going to try not to go that far um, out of schedule, okay? But the thing is, the class will always be 60 minutes minimum, okay? But never 59, never 58, okay? So it's always 60 minutes or probably a little bit more if necessary, but normally it's just 
my classes usually go like for an hour and two minutes, okay? Something like that. Um, as, as you know, each class is recorded. This class is being recorded right now, okay? And uh, and uh, it will be, uh, you will have access to it once I have uploaded it later on, on, on the same evening. I always upload the class on the same evening. Um, as far as I understand, the teachers have, uh, have are permitted to do it, you know, until the next day in the morning. But in my particular case, I don't do it the next day in the morning because I don't have time. So I always do it right after the class. Just the, the video processes and once the video is processed, I upload it. So um, that's something that uh, it's, it's guaranteed for you in my class. You will always have it available after the class. Uh, classes begin today, September 25th. Okay, and they're from eight from, uh, from 8 to 9 p.m. Okay, just one hour. I know it's difficult, you know, to be here at from at 8 p.m. I'm pretty sure you you have some other things to do. You want to be with your families probably, or you want to just watch TV and relax. Probably just go to bed. But well, uh, I appreciate that you're here and uh, that you're making an effort. Okay, um, you know, everything in life is uh, everything has a cost. Okay, and in this case, this is kind of like a, kind of like a scholarship. You know, this is something that that you can do. It's basically free for you guys. So the cost is the time. Okay, and um, I respect that. Let me tell you, I respect that, and I really appreciate that you're here uh, tonight, willing to learn. Uh, the next is, as, as I mentioned before, the, the camera must be on. So whenever possible, have your camera on. Okay. And uh, you have to work on the exercises in the platform every day, of course. And finally, you get a diploma, okay? Not for me specifically, right? It's just the administrative uh, staff from, from Inglés Corporativo who does that, okay? So I really don't know uh, what the process is right there, but I understand that you get a diploma at the end. So um, that's about it, okay? Um, nothing new, it's pretty much the same from every level. So. Uh, we're going to begin now. This is Advanced English 2, and uh, that's me, Ivan Donyang, at your service. Once again, this is session number one, and today's September 25th, up to 2023. Well, one thing we're going to do now is uh, we're going to, um, I'm going to call your names from the attendance list. Okay, so when you hear your name, please let me know you're here. I'm going to begin right now. Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala. Present teacher. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Good. Thank, thank you. you. How are you? Okay. Hey, wait. What's happening? What? Hmm. Something's not working here. Okay. I'll have to report it. Okay. So instead, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take your names here on the separate list. Uh, something's... Well, maybe if I reload it let's see just give me a second sometimes that helps okay and if it doesn't i'll have to report the issue but i'm taking your attendance one way or another don't worry okay so yeah okay that did it um ana filomena mendoza good evening teacher present. good evening hello Good to see you. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Good evening, teacher. I'm here. Hello. Uh, Andrea Michel Selva Selva. Andrea Michel Selva Selva. Not here, not yet. Uh, Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present, teacher. Hello oh. again. Hello, Byron. Good to see you. Cesar Alexander Ramirez Ramirez. Cesar Alexander Ramirez. Hi. Present. Hello. Hello, Cesar. Hello. Okay. Uh, Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Present. Hello. Hello, Debbie. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia. Hello. Good evening, teacher. Present. Hello, Daisy. Good to see you. Gabriel Alberto Lemus Guzmán. I'm sorry. I said, no, 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 no. Francisco Alberto. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Francisco <laughs> Hello, Alberto. Teacher, good evening. Ah, yeah. I remember you. Okay. Yeah. I, you're, you're like in this really dark room all the time. Okay. Francisco, <laughs> welcome. Good to yeah. see you again. Well, kind of see you again, right? Because I 
I can only partially see your face. Okay, Gabriela Lourdes Sequeira Bernal. Present. Hello, Gabriela. Good to see you. Uh, it is yeah. Regina Hernandez Cuellar. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. It is. Okay. Um, Javier Ernesto Lucero Escobar. Present. Hello. Um, Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortez. Good evening, teacher. Present. Good evening, Jenny. Uh, Jose Arturo Ramirez Bernal. Um, good evening, teacher. Present. Hello. Uh, okay. <laughs> Funny avatar you have right there. No. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Jose Eraibin Enrique. Present, teacher. Hello, Jose. Uh, Madeline Diana Ceron de Paz. Hi, teacher. Good evening. Hello, Madeline. Welcome. Maritza Isabel Mendez Aguirre. Present teacher. Welcome. Nadia Isolina Rodriguez Ramirez. Hi, present sir. Hello, hello. Noemí Alicia Estrada Palacios. I'm here, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, Noemí. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura. Hi. Hello, Reina. I'm here. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Ricardo Ernesto Ramirez Quijano. I'm here, teacher. How are you? Good, good. Thank you very much. Welcome. Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares. <clears throat> Present, teacher. Hello, Rufino. Uh, Janet Janira Rodríguez Andres. Present, teacher. Hello. Welcome. Um, okay, that's that's great. Almost everybody is present. Just just only one person. Let's see. Uh, Andrea Michelle Selva Selva. She joined us. Not yet. Okay, I'm calling attendance <clears throat> at the end of class again. So everybody, welcome. Okay, uh, that's enough talk for today. Let's 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 get into this. All right. <clears throat> so um, each each section, okay, um, and this level is divided into lessons. This is the first lesson, and here's the first exercise. This is <clears throat> not in the platform, but it's included in the manual. So types of people you might meet, okay? Now, take a look at the types of people you might meet. It's always exciting to meet new people, okay? Like today, for example, um, I recognize some of you. Some of you have been my students before. Some others are, you know, new faces to me. So, um, and I'm also a new face to, to some of you. So this is the kind of situation we're talking about. These are the types of people you might meet. Now, read about six different types of people you sometimes meet on social occasions. Match the descriptions with the pictures. And then you have it here. Letter A. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay. This guy is saying, I believe it's him who's saying something, but the speech globe is for some reason pointing at the lady. Okay. But he says, excuse me, let me say. Letter B says, hi, are you enjoying the party? Right. Uh, letter C goes like, I really enjoy it. And the lady is looking, you know, away. Uh, letter D, he says, I'm absolutely the best tennis player. Letter E goes like, that's a great necktie. And letter F is like, so then I blah, 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 etc. So I want you to take a look at descriptions and um, I need volunteers to read them. And as you read them, I want you to tell me, um, I want you to match the description uh, with the picture. You tell me if it's A, B, C, D, E, or F. So do I have a volunteer for the first one? You just need to read it. And after that, I just want you to identify what picture it is describing. Jose Arturo, okay. Hmm. Read about six different types of people you sometimes meet on social location. Match the description with the picture. Okay. Number yeah. one. Number one, please. It's a good idea to try out different topics to get a conversation going. And and the conversation start that's just that. Yeah, the conversation starter. Okay, so Jose Arturo, which picture are they talking about so A, B, C, D, E, or F? Hmm. Hi, is letter B. Letter B, okay. Yep. Yeah, that's a fantastic Mr. Fox. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Jose Arturo. Yeah, that's correct. It's letter B. He says, hi, are you enjoying the party? That is correct. Okay, that's the picture. That's the conversation starter. I am definitely not the conversation starter on social occasions. 
absolutely not. Okay, uh, for me, this is a very difficult thing to do. Okay, I, I, I prefer when people come and talk to me. I don't usually go talk to people. It's, it's difficult. Number two, who wants to try? Raise your hand if you want to participate. Reina Isabel. Queen Isabel. <laughs> okay, from yeah. Spain. Okay, number two. I guess you're you're tired of hearing that joke. I'm sorry. Okay, number two. <laughs> Please. Um, okay. Talking about your accomplishment too much, it often considered rude, but that doesn't stop the braggart. The braggart. Okay, talking about your accomplishments too much is often considered rude, but that doesn't stop mm -hmm. the braggart. Okay, so which one is that, Reina? Do you like Reina or Isabel? Uh, I rather have my last name, Romero. Romero. Yeah. Okay, so I'll call you Miss Romero. Okay, Miss Romero. Um, Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, um, to me, is letter D. Letter I'm absolutely D. the best tennis player. That's correct. That's the bragger. Okay, your accomplishments are the things that you manage to do. Okay, so for example, imagine somebody comes and says like, "Oh yeah, you know, every time I participate in something, I win." Uh, so that's an accomplishment. Okay, or they say like, "And and I have studied this and that, and I'm currently working on this and also that." And you know, so that's a bragger. It's somebody who brags about something. Okay, it's um, you know, a person who likes to tell you how great they are. Okay. Janet Janira Rodriguez, do you want to participate or do you have a question? Uh, to, par to participate, teacher. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, Janet, can you help me read number three? Yes. Saying nice things about others is customary for the complimenter. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, letter E, maybe. That is correct, yeah. That is correct. Saying nice things about others is customary for the complimenter. Okay, yeah, that's right. And you say, hey, you look good. Okay, or say, hey, hey, that, that, that was very nice of you, et cetera, et cetera. You, so you give compliments to people. Thank you, Janet. That, that's the correct answer. Very good. What about number four? Rufino. I'm going to try again. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, it's... Yeah. It's true, it's true to ignore your conversation partner, but the wondering eye does, does, does it anyway. The wondering eye. Uh, letter okay. A. Uh, letter uh, A. Anyway, uh, letter A. This one, the first one? Yes. Um, Sorry, but no, it's not that one. But you get a second try, no. Rufino. Um, the, the wondering okay. eye. That's the wondering eye. F, probably? letter F. He says like so. Then I F? blah 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 etc etc. Uh, well, thank you for reading, Rufino. But no, okay. um, unfortunately, it's not <laughs> okay. letter A or letter F. Okay, but thank you. Uh, how about okay. Nadia? Nadia, what uh, what is what is the right picture in this case? In my opinion, it's a letter picture letter C. That's right. Okay, it's letter C. That's the wandering eye. This is this is the kind of person you're having a conversation with, but this person doesn't look at you in the face. They don't look at you, okay? You're talking to them, but they're always looking somewhere else. Uh-huh, mm-hmm, yes, yeah, yeah. It's kind of weird, okay? Sometimes when you talk to people like this, you're looking at them, but they're not looking at you, okay? That happens, okay? That's, that's, that's the kind of person that it's known as wandering eye. Wonder is like to go from one place to another, okay? The wandering eye, just like picture C. Thank you. Um, uh, Byron, okay, number five. Okay, number five. Yes. Talking about topics that interest, interest Joe is found. Unfortunately, the board is interesting to no one else. Okay. Talking about topics that interest you is fun. Unfortunately, the bore is interesting to no one else. Okay, who's the bore? It's letter F. That is correct. That's the bore. Okay, the person who just talks and talks and you go like, mm-hmm, 
<laughs> and they don't say anything interesting. That's the word. You just keep talking and talking. Thank you, Byron. That is correct. Very good. And the last one, well, there's only one option left. Who wants to read it? Who would like to read it? Nadia, okay. Thank you for your participation. It's usually considered impolite to interrupt people, but interrupter is always jump, jumping into conversation out of, out of turn. Out of turn, correct. Somebody is talking and then he, whoa, 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 he interrupts. <sighs> okay, so that's obviously letter A. Of course, yes, letter A. Letter A right? The only option available, but yeah, just like this guy, right? They're talking. He says, "Excuse me, let me say, okay." And he never lets other people talk. He or she never lets other people talk. So yeah, th those are the people right there. There's the conversation started, like letter B, the braggart the person who likes to say like how great they are, okay. Uh, the complimenter, which is quite the opposite, is the, the person who likes to tell other people how great they are. Um, the wandering eye, the person who doesn't look at you when they're having a conversation with you. The bore is the person who only talks and talks and talks and not, never says anything interesting. And the interrupter is, well, as, as the name implies, a person who interrupts who gave the conversation. Nadia Rodriguez. Teacher, I, I don't understand many words this text. Ah, okay, uh, please. What, what words uh, do you need for, clarification for? For example... Bra braggart. A braggart. Bra okay. Braggart. A braggart. A braggart. It comes from the word brag. Okay. When you brag about something. Okay. Imagine that you have done something. You you um you won a contest. Okay. You won a contest and uh, at university or at work, and then you, you tell everybody, you know, I won this, I got first place. Then you tell other people, I got first place right here. Okay, so you're bragging about it. You're bragging about it. Some people like to brag about their accomplishments. That's the meaning of brag, okay? That's the verb. To brag about something is to talk about the things that you have done, usually in an annoying way, okay? So a braggart is someone who brags about their it's accomplishments. Like competing too. Kind of, uh -huh, yeah. So when we are bra bragging, we try to compete. With yeah, when you're when you're bragging, like you try to compete. Yeah, that's true. Okay, people say like, yeah, you know, and last year I went to this place, right? And and also this year I'm planning to go to this other place, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. People are bragging about it. You go like, oh, okay, good for you, man, good for you. So um, that's a braggart. Okay, somebody who brags about something. Um, any other question, uh, Nadia? Yes, teacher. Is the um, other other word I don't understand what is the meaning? Is a uh, wandering. Wandering. W wandering. Mm -hmm. To wander is to go from one place to another. You know, when, for example, you see people on the street and they don't go to a specific place. They're just walking. They go to one place, then they go to another place, then they go to another place. And they're just walking around. Okay, going from one place to another. That's that's wander. Okay, so that's one. So the wandering eye means, in this case specifically, right? You're having a conversation with that person, but that person is not looking at you. Their 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 eyes are moving around, but they don't they don't see you. They don't they don't look into your eyes, right? They don't they don't see you in the face. So the eye is wandering, right? That's the idea. Um, any Thank other you question? Sir. You're welcome. Any other question about the vocabulary or somebody else? Does does anybody else have a question about the vocabulary? No questions. Okay. All right. Uh, we have a chat entry right here. Brag. Oh, Gabriela Lotus says, to speak with pride, often with too much pride about something you have done or something you possess. Uh huh. Yeah. Talk about your accomplishments. You're like very proud about what you have done in the past. That's to brag. And the braggart is someone who brags. Uh, thank you, Gabriela. Um, all right, so if there are no more questions, we're going to continue. Okay, this is just uh, some vocabulary. Okay, of course, this is uh, this vocabulary is kind of informal. Okay, these terms are not like really that formal. It's just um, what you call this kind of people, but you should probably not use these terms in a formal context. Okay, anyway, um, lesson objective 1.0. Okay, 
by the end of this lesson, participants will be able to use and practice infinitive and gerund phrases, okay? Nothing complicated about this. It's actually pretty easy. But there are certain variations that you have to watch out for. So take a good look at this. Infinitive and gerund phrases. What do we have here? What do we use? It plus the verb be plus an adjective or noun plus an infinitive phrase is often used to comment on behavior. Now that sounds complicated, okay, when you see it like in a formula, but it's not complicated when you see it here. These sentences can also be restated with gerund phrases. How so? You can say, for example, it's rude to ignore your conversation partner. Somebody is talking to you and you're looking at your phone, you're ignoring that person, okay? So that's rude, don't do it. So. It's rude to ignore your conversation partner. Now, what is the structure here? I'm going to zoom in. You use it's, after it's, you have to use an adjective, okay? An adjective or an adjective with a noun, which is a noun phrase. So uh, it's rude and after that you use it to infinitive. It's rude to ignore, it's easy to do, it's hard to accomplish, etc., etc. So you say it's plus an adjective and then a to infinitive. What is the to infinitive? It's the verb preceded by the word to. It's rude to ignore your conversation partner. However, you can say the same sentence using a gerund phrase. And what is a gerund phrase? You use a gerund phrase at the beginning of a sentence if you want to use the action as the subject of the sentence. How so? Take a look at the sentence once again. It's rude to ignore your conversation partner. If you want an alternative way of saying this, you can say ignoring your conversation partner is rude. Same meaning. Two different ways of saying the same thing. Okay, so you can say it's rude to ignore your conversation partner or ignoring your conversation partner is rude. Second example, it's a good idea to try out different topics. Don't talk about the same thing all the time. You can talk about different topics in so on social occasions. So it's a good idea to try out different topics. So you can see it here, you're using it's after that, you're using good, which is an adjective. But in this case, the adjective comes with a noun. It's a good idea. And after that, you use an infinitive to try out different topics. You can express it in a different way. You just say, trying out different topics is a good idea. Same idea, two different sentences, two different structures. But the meaning is the same. Nothing changes right there. So if I say, for example, let's see, it's uh, impolite to uh, have a conversation while uh, chewing your food. Okay, right? It's impolite to have a conversation while chewing your food. Well, while you're chewing your, oops, let's make it like this. It's impolite to have a conversation while you're chewing your food. Okay, so that's it. You have it here. You say it's, after that, you use an adjective, impolite, and after that, you use the to infinitive form, to have. Okay? They say that if you're having a conversation, if you're eating something first, you have to, you know, finish eating, swallow whatever it is that you're, you're, you're chewing, and after that you talk. But some people like, oh, they talk while they're chewing, and you can see all the food inside their mouths. So um, let's face it, we all do this. <laughs> Nobody really cares. So um, you can express this sentence in a different way. You can start with a gerund phrase at the beginning. Who would like to try? It's impolite to have a conversation while you're chewing you. Debbie, Natalia, Segura, Ramos. Uh, I think it's having a conversation uh -huh. while you're chewing, while you're chewing your food. Mm -hmm. So far, so it's, good. Uh, impolite. I'm it's sorry? Impolite. It's impolite. It's impolite. Yeah. 
Correct. You nailed it. That's right. Having a conversation while you're chewing your food is impolite. Totally. That's how you do it. You use a gerund phrase at the beginning, and that means you have to use the action as the subject of the sentence. And when you use an action as the subject of the sentence, you have to use the ing form of that action, of that verb. So having a conversation while you're chewing your food is impolite. Two different ways of expressing the same idea. All right, that's good. What if I say, let's try something a bit easier. Okay, it's, it's hard to find a job these days. Okay, this one is easier. It's hard to find a job these days. You have the structure, you're using it's, after that you're using an adjective, hard, and after that you have to use a to infinitive. But you can express the same idea by using the gerund phrase. Alejandro Quintanilla. Excuse me, teacher. Uh, what is the meaning of chewing or chewing? Uh, when you're eating, first you have to put the food in your mouth and then you have to chew. Oh, mm. uh, okay. 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 Thank you. Teacher. For, first step in the digestion system <laughs> or process in this case. So, um, Jose Arturo. Uh, I can hear you. I only see you. <laughs> you have to activate your microphone. Okay. 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 <laughs> um, this is find, so funny. <laughs> finding a job. Uh huh. It's hard these days. Finding a job. Uh, can you repeat it? Finding finding a job. It's hard these days. These days. Okay. You can say it like that. However, there's only one little problem. If you say it like this, it's hard these days the problem is this it it's a subject but you already have a subject and the subject is here finding a job hmm. so if you say finding a job and then you say it you are repeating the subject instead okay. you have right. to eliminate it you just have this mm -hmm. finding a job is hard these days Okay. Thank you can you. also express the idea like this. Finding a job these days is hard. That will also apply. Okay. Yep. Okay. It's, it's the same meaning. The same meaning, basically. Finding a job these days is hard. Or finding a job is hard these days. Mm -hmm. Pretty much the same meaning. Uh, yeah. That's the thing. Just remember that when you're using a gerund phrase... Don't use it again, only is. All right, very good. Thanks for your participation. Now, uh, the word considered may also follow the verb be in this kind of sentence. Sorry, I just had a piece of cake before the class. Okay, now it, probably it was, a, it was a bad idea, okay. Having a piece of case before the class is a bad idea, right? So it's considered impolite to interrupt people. You can say it's considered. Before the adjective, you can use considered, right? Um, it's considered impolite to interrupt people. You can say interrupting people is considered impolite. You can say that, okay? So... Uh, let say it's it's considered weird to eat a pupusa with a fork in El Salvador. Okay. In my opinion, there's nothing wrong with it, but most people consider it weird. Almost offensive <laughs> to some people. So how can you express this sentence using a gerund phrase? Who wants to participate? Let's not use the word weird. It sounds kind of offensive. Unusual. Or, yeah, it's considered unusual to eat a pupusa with a fork in the sun. Alejandro. Eating pupusa with a fork? Uh huh. It's considered unusual in El Salvador? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Eating a pupusa with a fork is considered unusual in El Salvador. Some people get offended <laughs> by it. 
I don't understand why. But yeah. So yeah, totally. Thank you, Alejandro. That is correct. Now, these sentences can also include the phrase for plus a person or pronoun. Example, it's customary for the complimenter to say nice things about others. Again, it's customary. You have it's plus the adjective customary. But before the to infinitive verb, you can include for and a person for the complimenter. It's customary for the complimenter to say nice things about others. Uh, the same idea used in a gerund phrase would be saying nice things about others is customary for the complimenter. Okay. So uh, that's that's the way it is. Um, before we continue, because there's there are several exercises that we need to do. It's already eight forty six. We only have fifteen minutes. Um, do you have any questions about this? No questions. I'm willing no questions. to believe there are no questions because uh, you're you're doing great. Okay, right now, I mean, uh, say converting the sentences using uh, gerund phrases. Okay, all right then. So um, exercise time. I want you to look at the starting point on page 36 again, which is not necessary because it's on the screen. Can you find more sentences that begin with gerunds? Okay. Try to change them into sentences beginning with it's. Now you're going to do the opposite process. Okay, uh, we were doing here. We, we had sentences beginning with it's, and then you uh, made them into sentences, or uh, you made sentences, you know, beginning with a gerund phrase. Now I want you to find sentences beginning with a gerund phrase. In other words, beginning with an action, a verb in ing form, and I want you to tell me the other form beginning with it's. It's plus an adjective plus to infinitive. So um, can you find something here? If you find one, let me know, and then you have to tell me the other form. Jose Arturo. Um, number two, talking about. Uh -huh. Talking about your accomplishments is too, is too much is often considered rude. OK. Yep. Uh, can you tell me the same sentence, but beginning with its? Um. It's, it's considered rude to talk about your accomplishment too much. Give me a second, please. Something went wrong with the presentation. I apologize. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you say it's often considered rude to talk about your point, your accomplishments too much. Okay, mm -hmm. that is correct. Thank you, Jose Arturo. Good. Um, there are two more. Who wants to participate? Just look for gerund phrases. You know, when when uh, it begins with a verb in ing, that's a gerund phrase. That's for sure. Nadia. And then Maritza. Maritza will be next. Keep keep your uh, Maritza, please keep keep your hand up so that I, I won't forget. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. And the number four. Number four. Number four is who. To ignore your conversation partner. It's, it's rude to ignore your conversation partner. Okay, well, you have a yes. sentence, but this sentence begins with it's. Uh, what I want you to do is to find sentences that begin with a gerund. In other words, with a verb in ing. Um, like this one. When you... I I'm tried. Sorry. I uh -huh. tried. Okay, and okay. Igno ignoring, ignoring. Your conversation parent is rude. Okay, ignoring your conversation partner is rude. Absolutely. <laughs> totally, totally, totally. Well, you did like uh, the opposite process, but what you did is just right. Okay, thank you very much. Maritza Isabel. I try, teacher. Okay. Um, interrupting people is usually considered impolite. 
interrupting people is usually considered impolite. Okay, okay, that's good. Well, what you're doing is you're taking some of the sentences beginning with it's right here and you're making them into sentences beginning with a German phrase. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, it's actually it's actually good. Okay, it, it, it goes to show that you understand uh, you understand uh, what we're doing. The, the only problem is that the exercise is not about that. <laughs> so the exercise is for you to find uh, gerund phrases here in the text, and I want you to convert those sentences into sentences beginning with its. But what you're doing is fine. I mean, it's just not exactly what we want you to do in the exercise, but it's grammatically correct. I cannot deny that. Uh, let's see, Debbie and then Alejandro. And then Reina uh, uh, Miss Romero, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, Debbie. I will try the I will try number five. Okay. It's fun to talk about topics that interest you. Okay, so you have uh, talking about topics that interest you is fun. It's fun to talk about topics that interest you. That is correct. Yeah. Uh, however, there's a specific order of animations that I cannot uh override right now. So <laughs> Um, that will, it's, it's not the next one. Okay. But, but it is correct. Okay. Um, I will show it after, you know, the other one that is somewhere in here, but yeah, thank you, Debbie. Alejandro. I, I will try to, to answer number three, teacher. Number three. Okay. Yes. Um, it's customary for the complimenter mm -hmm. to say night nice things about others that's correct it's customary for the complimenter to say nice things about others and then debbie said talking about topics that interest you is fun debbie said uh it's fun to talk about topics that interest you okay that is correct okay uh sorry miss romero but you go for the next one i promise <laughs> okay uh, but... was... ah sorry uh, was do you have a question? To say the number four number four number four it's true to ignore your conversation partner okay Turning into ignoring uh, your conversation partner is rude. Okay, ignoring your conversation partner is rude. Totally. Okay, that will be like the opposite process, but grammatically correct nonetheless. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for your participation. I appreciate it. Great. 852. It's late. Okay, exercise time. Everybody take a look at this. Now, this is your chance. Rewrite the sentences using infinitive or gerund phrases. Then compare answers with the partner. Well, we're going to compare answers with the whole class right here. Um, the first one is, it's inappropriate to talk about politics at school, at work or school. So you say talking about politics at work or school is inappropriate. Okay, in this case, they are using a sentence beginning with it's plus an adjective plus a two infinitive. And they converted it into a sentence beginning with a gerund phrase. The second one is the opposite. Now you have a, a, a sentence beginning with a German phrase and you have to convert it into a sentence that begins with its adjective and then uh, to infinitive. So the second one is using certain gestures is impolite in some foreign countries, okay? I don't know which ones, but okay. Using certain gestures is impolite in some foreign countries. So how about this one? Who wants to try? Janet Janira. Um, I think it can be, it could be, sorry. Um, it's impolite in some foreign countries uh, to use certain gestures. Yes, the phrasing may change a little bit, but the idea is correct. What I have here is it's impolite to use certain gestures in some foreign countries. But what you said is also possible. It's impolite in some foreign countries to use certain gestures. Yeah, totally, totally possible. Okay, yeah, it simplifies to use certain gestures in some foreign countries. Very good, thank you, Janet. That's great. Uh, number three, asking someone's age is often considered rude. The ladies in particular don't like it, okay? In case of men, we don't care. <laughs> we just say, how old are you? Say, how old are you? I said, I'm, I'm 38 years old, okay. All right, I'll be 40 in two years. Hmm. So, um. Who wants to participate? Jenny Santiana. I try, teacher. Okay. Um, it's considered true uh, 
It's often considered rude asking someone's age. It's often considered rude uh, to ask, ask, to ask. ask, to. <laughs> to ask yes. someone's age. Yeah. To ask. Yeah, it's often considered rude to ask someone's yes. age. Mm -hmm. yes. There you go. Okay, thank you, Jenny. That is correct. It's often considered rude to ask someone's age. Great. Um, how about number four? Who wants to try number four? Number four. Uh, number four is, it's not unusual uh, in the U.S. to address a professor by his or her first name. In El Salvador, that will be very unusual. Usually. So, um, so it's not unusual in the U.S. to address a professor by his or her first name. You say, hey, fulano, okay, just by the first name. Okay, maybe in the United States, okay, but in El Salvador, it's, we don't do this. Gabriela Laure. Addressing a professor by his or her first name, it's not unusual in the U.S. Okay, that's correct. The phrasing may be a bit different, but yeah, that's the idea. I have here, in the U.S., addressing a professor by his or her first name is unusual. You can also say in the U.S. at the end. No problem. That is correct. Thank you, Gabriela. Addressing a professor by his or her first name isn't unusual. Okay, great. Very good, very good. Number five, hugging friends when you greet them is customary in many cultures. We do it in El Salvador. So how about this one? Who would like to participate? Uh, uh, Janet, I don't know if you want to participate or if your hand is up. No, it's up. <laughs> you forgot to. Okay, lower it. Okay, don't worry. Debbie Natalia. Okay, I'll try, teacher. Okay. It is customary in many cultures to hug friends when you greet them. Yeah, again, the phrasing may be a bit different, but that's the idea. In many cultures, it's customary to hug friends when you greet them, or you can say it's customary in many countries to hug friends when you greet them, or it's customary to hug friends when you greet them in many countries. Well, probably not at the end, okay? Sounds weird, in many countries. Well, but yeah, that's that's the thing. Very good, thank you, thank you very much. And the last one, asking strangers if they're married is inappropriate in some countries. How about this one? So apparently in some countries you say, are you married? Okay, some people would say like, what do you want to know? <laughs> so um, who wants to try? Mirai. Who said that? Mirai, teacher. <laughs> ah, okay, uh, Miss Romero. Okay, yeah. Okay, th this is yeah. this is why this okay. is why I insist. Um, raise raise your your virtual I'm hand because sorry. it's it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry. Because sometimes when you, when when people just okay. talk, I'm like, who 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 said that? Who said that? Okay. Uh, thank you, Miss Romero. Number six. Okay. In some countries, <clears throat> it's inappropriate. Mm, to ask strangers if they're married. That's right. In some countries, it's inappropriate to ask strangers if they're married. That is correct. Very good. Very, very, very good. Okay. Um, now, this is Knowledge Check 1.2 in the platform. You can see it. Uh, uh, the platform is not open. I forgot to open the platform. It usually takes like about two minutes. Um, but yeah, it's it's the same exercise that you have in the platform. This is Knowledge Check 1.2. However, one thing that you have to know about the Knowledge Check 1.2, and uh, you can see it here, is that there is a, there is a mistake right there. And I have uh, pointed it out here. Take a look. In the Knowledge Check, you have, it's appropriate. For some reason, it says it's appropriate to talk about politics at, at work or school. 
Okay, if you use the word appropriate into the answer, it will be taken as wrong. Okay, so I'm telling you in advance so that you don't get it wrong, use the word inappropriate. Okay, apparently uh, somebody typed in the wrong word. So um, should be inappropriate. If you want to get it correct, okay, use the word inappropriate. For the rest, it's pretty much the same. You have the answers right there. It's the same exercise we just solved here. Okay, so you have it there. Um, just let me see if, if it has already, no, this is taking forever. Okay. Every time I try to open the, the web page or the portal for the first time in the day, it takes, it takes some time. Okay. Um, it's already nine. Okay. Just give me a second as it loads the page. So I wanted just to show you about the exercise. Madeline. I have a question. So sure. What's in the sentences four, uh, nearby the letter S, is that Which how one? do you uh -huh. so sorry, sorry. In the sentences four. Number four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is nearby the that del punto la par del punto y una coma <laughs> ah yeah okay next next to the there's a comma next to the period yeah uh -huh. so on the platform we should to do you have to add the comma yeah okay. if you don't if you don't add the comma it will be taken as wrong yeah this is this is the problem when when you have to type in the answer because if one character it's not exactly the same as in the answer, okay? It will be taken as wrong, even though it might be correct. So yeah, yeah. totally, okay? So yeah, yeah, it's in the US, comma, <laughs> a space addressing a professor by his or her first name isn't unusual. And also this one isn't. Uh, remember the apostrophe, you have to use the apostrophe. I'm sorry, but I'm trying to to show the, the web page, but it, it doesn't know. So I guess we're going to do it tomorrow. But the thing is, I want you to work on this. You should uh, complete uh, section 1.0, 1.1, which is a video. Okay, I want you to watch the video, watch the whole video, and then complete uh, the knowledge check in 1.2. If you can do more than that, that will be great. Okay, tomorrow we'll continue. We're going to do some extra exercises uh, to reinforce this, and uh, that will be it. Uh, before I go, I just want to know, is Andrea Michelle Selva Selva with us tonight? Andrea Michelle Selva Selva? Uh, Miss Romero, yes? Teacher, I have a question. It sure. doesn't have to do with the class. <laughs> okay. But I would like to know if you know about this topic. It's called um, bottom up and top down, or versus top down. I'm not sure about that. But the uh, friend of mine is asking to me because in well, his how, how, career, uh -huh. his degree, they are asking to him to expose about that topic. But I think they didn't give him uh, that complete context about what, 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 is, what, what is What is the phrase again? Sorry? What, what is the phrase again? The, the, the topic? Hello? <laughs> the picture froze. Okay. Um, we we can... Chat? Ah, Something like ah that. via chat. Okay, so bottom up versus... Bottom, bottom up versus top down. I'm not really sure, but I can investigate. Uh -huh. I'm going to investigate and I'm going to send it. I'm going to uh, put it in the group. Okay. One of my versus top okay. down. I'm not sure. Thank you okay. so much. You're welcome. Um, we have to stop here because we're <laughs> going overboard with the time. So um, thank you, everybody. Uh, good to see you again. And, and the new faces, nice to meet you. And um, we'll continue tomorrow. Thank you very much. And good night. Thank you. Thank Have a good you. night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. 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 B